Hello again, O oh audience of questionable veracity, and welcome back to The Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and uh, the plot has continued to thicken in the last couple episodes. One of the main things being the emergence and explosion of Nitra as a very powerful state, in fact a great power in the uh, Eastern European region. We also saw Austria take quite a big bite out of Naples, threatening their expansion in the Italian region. Kasim spawned yet again up in the Crimean steppe, and uh, I thought we'd seen them dealing with some rebels. Perhaps those are still there. Uh, the fog of war is on from when I turned on uh, Observe. We'll see when I start the uh, start the game. Mazovia continuing to look good. Uh, Moldavia had really been reduced quite significantly at one point, but has now come back and actually conquered quite a bit of former Zaporozhian and Lithuanian Odievan land. In the east, the Emperor is now Wu. They're doing really about as well as their previous Emperors at this point, uh, only managing to secure two tributaries and the mandate dropping, so we'll see if they can uh, succeed where the others failed. Uh, notably in this region, the Ming Tag is now gone, so uh, a, a, just like the Ottomans, they can get released if someone uh, decides that that needs to happen, but uh, for now, the former emperors of Ming have been outright removed from the map. That's enough blabbing, let's go ahead and see what develops. There is the fog of war off, not seeing any rebels in Kasim, that's because they've moved down to Theodoro. Theodoro, who by the way is trying to remove the rest of Crimea, who is only around in Azov, Kuban, and Adige right now. We'll, uh... Uh, we'll, we'll just have to see. Really, it looks like these Separatists are going to be the movers and shakers in this region for now. Uh, Crimea likely to get some of their land back because while all of these guys down here can certainly siege back land from the rebels, they can't fight them. It's, it's just not going to work. One half of the Separatists, or rather one stack of the Separatists, now moving on to Zaporozhia. Crimea with cores all over this region, a lot from their earlier expansion, uh, these over to Yedison from the start of the game, so. Thinking we'll see that tag get strong again pretty soon, uh, even if they do get wiped out by Theodoro Circassia. Saruhan's going after Bulgaria. Bulgaria has been uh, an up and down tag this game. They've died and been reborn and died and been reborn again, and I think they're going to go down for what is the third time? Also, something I completely missed, Constantinople has fallen. Constantinople has fallen to Kandar, of all tags. So, Byzantium still around, but they're around only in Castoria and have a uh, great army of 2,000 men. Really, it's just whoever wants them can have them. In the French area, Austria is at peace, Gascony is at peace, Toulouse is at peace, Brittany is at peace. Not much going on here, the balance of power uh, looking stagnant for now, but really it's just going to be, are all of the tags over here going to be able to gather enough strength to challenge Austria? Uh, with Castile at their back, they might be able to do that. I'm sure we'll see Spain form soon, by the way. Considering uh, all we're really waiting for is for Castile to hit Admin Tech 10. Great Britain was formed uh, in the past couple of episodes. They are seemingly keeping out of European affairs, though uh, they have taken back their usual core in Calais, and do retain some of these over here on the coastline, including one on Normandy, which being only allied with Augsburg might be a tempting target for a lot of people over here, but especially uh, Great Britain, England. Actually, that core uh, not there, that an English core at the start of the game, maybe that doesn't transfer to Great Britain, or maybe it goes after 50 years? I cannot recall. Regardless, Great Britain also the main colonizer out of the Europeans. They've colonized Newfoundland and parts of Nova Scotia. The natives, still uh, unbothered by the colonization for now, but I'm thinking their time is coming. 
Creek notably holding down a 27,000 strong army. They're only on tech 6, but could be worse. I mean, Huron only on tech 4. Iroquois on tech 6. Heading up a quite strong federation now. Abenaki, Lenape, Mahican, Mi'kmaq, Ojibwe, and Powhatan. It's a lot of the tags over here. Huron used to have the massive one, and it's still pretty vague. Creek, Asinabuan, Caddo, Fox, Osage, Sioux, and Cree. So, I don't know if we've seen really any major wars between these two, but uh, it'd be quite the North American bloodbath if they were to fight. Down in Mexico, Shu looking like the strongest tag for now. Quiche looked like their equal at one point, but has now been split in half by the release of Zapotec. And uh, without allies, I mean, stranger things have happened. They could definitely come back, but right now, Shu looking like the tag to beat. The Aztecs allied with Zapotec, but uh, they are vassalized by Tarascon. So, uh, they're definitely the uh, Nahuatl tag who has won out for now, but their vassal's not happy with them. Looks like the Flower Wars might continue. Charka expanding, possibly might be able to form Inca, who knows? Regardless, they've eaten most of Wonka's land and now do share a border with Shimu, so uh, they might be able to get up north here pretty soon. They are, in fact, at war with Shimu. So, uh,. See how that war goes. I think if Sharka manages manages to take some land off Shimu, that'll pretty much solidify them as the tag to form Inca. Down here it is Kuba that won out hard in that war with Congo, taking a great portion of land from them. I'd previously referred to them as a kingmaker, but now they are a power in their own right. As soon as that alliance breaks with Kakonja, that war is going to, going to determine who wins out in this region. In the Great Lakes, Rwanda looking pretty good. Definitely the strongest out of the four tags here. Banyoro uh, really has been the isolated tag over here. It's always seemed like there's been an alliance between Burundi, Rwanda, and Nakor against them, and uh, that's gone into effect. Banyoro has lost Buganda and Busoga to Rwanda, as well as Banyoro to Nakor. In the south, Sofala has nearly finished cleaning up all of the tags uh, in this region, aside from Muravi, who still is without allies and will get eaten eventually. Stage looking set for a big war between Sofala and Kilwa for uh, southeastern African hegemony. Mogadishu still looking alright. Haven't, uh, I don't think their borders have changed much since the last time we saw them, though they might have eaten the rest of Ajuran. Uh, I believe they actually are holding on to most of what uh, Ajuran's borders start out with, with the exceptions of Galkayo and Hobio. Ethiopia seemingly consolidated most of its uh, usual territory down here, probably looking to expand into the Horn of Africa, though they do have to be mindful of the Mamluks. They lost a war against the Mamluks in Hejaz earlier, and uh, something that could certainly happen again. Elodia allied to Ethiopia Mercuria, so looks like Ethiopia is going to leave its fellow Copts alone and uh, either expand into Arabia or, again, the Horn of Africa. Speaking of the Mamluks, they did lose a war against Syria in the last part, uh, though they only lost Nablus, which is a 10 development province, but uh, really things could have been far worse for them. Uh, the Mamluks really got off easy because Syria had to deal with Persia, and now Syria has to deal with Persia again. So, I think I've mentioned a second documented empire might be in the offing. We'll uh, see how that goes. Saruhan taking the hurt from Kandar, and uh, seemingly Mentessa as well, perhaps even Karaman. Just Mentessa and Kandar, regardless, they are now one tag versus two. Seeing... Uh, 9k over here from Kandar. Not sure where. Ah, Mentessa has 8k there. Saruhan does have the best general out of all of these people. Yakub Cesar, A4410. Certainly not bad, but uh, not good enough to 
likely take on 17,000 at once. Is Karaman just somebody's vassal? Kinda confused as to why he's in their land. Not sure. Regardless, all of Saruhan's European holdings, including the last ones taken from Bulgaria, they're completely sieged down by the other Baliks, including forts in Edirne. I, I think just Edirne. Uh, no forts have been built in Bulgaria. And, oh, Hungary. Hungary, Hungary, Hungary. Hungary, uh, formerly very strong in this region. Of course, they retained most of their cores at the beginning, but they have just been eaten away. Uh, first by Nitra, now by Croatia, which has been spat out again. Mostly by Venice. Serbia free now, actually allied with Byzantium Wallachia, so that provides a degree of protection for the Eastern Romans, but... Uh, Really, Venice is going to want that, and want that soon. Venice is doing very well after losing most of its mainland provinces up here to the Austrians. Uh, have turned it around and made themselves the main European force, at least in the outright Greek region. I'm guessing if Sauron weren't be getting... weren't... If Sauron was not getting beaten up by its fellow Baliks, Venice might be looking over there to expand its influence. And I'm sure Venice is eyeing the city of the world's desire. Kandar only allied with Mentessa. I think Venice, especially if they were to call in somebody else, say the Knights, they could most likely take Constanto Constantinople if they wanted to. I'm not seeing the Crimean Separatists up here. So, ah, that would be because they managed to take... Zaporozhi and only Zaporozhi. So Crimea existing up here actually kicked out of all of its original territory. Uh, Theodoro looking pretty decent up here though. They did take Kuban for themselves in that war with Crimea and uh, gave Adige to Circassia, gave Azov back to Genoa, and now taking Azov for themselves. So uh, really nice to see that Kasim not too badly hurt by those Crimean separatists. Uh, Rest in peace, Zaporoz or Zaporozzi, but uh, we've seen them come back before. They can certainly do it again. Muscovy has formed Russia, so uh, they must have gotten Admin Tech 10. As you can see from this, you don't really need that many different cities to form Russia. Uh, I've done it once, but it was as Novgorod, and it was a while ago. I can't remember what all uh, cities and provinces you actually need to form Russia. I know Novgorod is one of them. Uh, I thought Ryazan was going to be one of them, but that obviously not the case, considering Russia does not have that. They are holding on to a about 60,000 strong army, thinking that could contend with most people right now. It's about three times the size of Novgorod's. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at the armies. As I'm in observer mode, you can see uh, all the rebels around the world have 100,000, but uh, yes, Russia is the nation holding on to the biggest army at this point. They have 63,000, but no manpower. Meanwhile, Persia holding onto the second largest army with about 50,000. 22 of them mercenaries. Syria still has 32,000, uh, and could attempt to contest Persia, but they're seemingly not doing that great a job of it right now. Uh, they're stack over on Baghdad, one of their former cities, but while that's been happening, Russia has been... Russia. Persia has been sieging down a lot of serious things, including Aleppo and the fort in Isel. This war now over, Saruhan's lands split by the war with Kandar and Mentessa. Mentessa has taken Bega, and Kandar has taken Kirkilise, Burgas. And the, uh, Europeans, seeing Saruhan's weakness, have pounced. We see both Wallachia and Serbia hoping to take their bites out of Saruhan. I'm not seeing them with an army at all, so uh, the White Hand seeing its reckoning. Guessing Wallachia and Serbia might be allied? They are. Who declared this one? That would be the Serbian conquest of Vidin, so Serbia in control of who gets what. Guessing Serbia will at least take Vidin and Sofia for themselves, uh, and perhaps give Tarnovo and maybe even Philibay 
to Valakia. Tarnovio, Tarnovo, at the very least, should go to Valakia. I think Valakia has a core on that. Uh, just a claim. Valakia was in control of that at one point, but perhaps made to renounce their core on that uh, in one of the wars against them. Crimea spawned, and uh, Crimea is going to be gone. Odia is still in control of a few provinces up in this area, and more than happy to jump on a armyless Crimea, take the provinces of Ingil and Zaporozhia for themselves. Neither of them great provinces, but uh, better in Odoyev's view, better theirs than uh, sitting there ready for the taking by the likes of Kasim or Moldavia or even Theodoro. Theodoro is somebody I'm quite impressed with. It's been slow expansion for them, but they have done pretty well. Russia's army down here, conducting exercises maybe. Uh, I think if they were at war, it's done now, and uh, they have expanded down into the Caspian region, the eastern Pontic Steppe, or perhaps this is actually in Central Asia, the region. Uh, regardless, Russia's armies were moving around. <laughs> Notably, the Livonian Order has retained control of Pskov. They had some rebels there earlier, I was wondering if they were going to lose it, but uh, they managed to keep a hold of it, and uh, are sitting as pretty as they can. They don't have any protection from their usual friends in the Teutonic Order, who has been eaten by Mazovia, but they do have protection from Nitra. Very good for them. Lithuania we see moving its army around. They are at war with Wurzburg. What war might that be? That would be the Saxon reconquest, or perhaps conquest of Bamberg. So Poland, Lithuania coming in to help their Saxon allies. They've been friends with each other for quite a while and have helped a bunch in each other's wars. Seem to recall Silesia being uh, taken down by that alliance a couple times, though I had thought that Saxony was going to have Glogau. Regardless, uh, Wurzburg now about to feel the might of the Saxon-Polish alliance. Looks like Austria has perhaps made its move in the French region? Ah, uh, no. Austria actually at war with Morocco and the Mamluks. Defending against Morocco in the Moroccan conquest of Hodna. What, pray tell, is... Ah. So Austria has allied Tunis and is now attempting to defend them from Morocco and the Mamluks. That's interesting. There we do see Spain forming. Knew that was only a matter of time, and uh, they have gotten Tech 10, and there's Spain. Spain, of course, having all of at least continental Iberia, because Portugal has been knocked off of that, but Portugal does still have the Azores. Spain can fabricate on those at any time from Madeira, but uh, apparently thinking that the Portuguese have been hurt enough. I mean, the Portuguese even losing their one colony down here in Sierra Leone to the Spanish. That said, Spain still lacking any colonies in the New World from what I can see. The richest lands, those in the Caribbean still anyone's for the taking. If I were Great Britain, I would jump on those immediately. Can get some great trade goods in that area too. Uh, these islands, most of them have a chance to give things like cocoa, I think, uh, cotton, coffee, all far better trade goods than, say, grain. The second Syrian-Persian War is still going on, and it looks like Syria did manage to send off one of the Persian stacks, looking to collapse on this little six stack, but that reinforced in time, and here comes the stack that was formerly sent packing. Syria gonna lose that one pretty handily. It is quite annoying when the AI does those sorts of things, uh, manages to stop its retreat. It seems like uh, it's a lot harder for players to control their retreats than it is for the AI. Because uh, in that case, Persia able to stop its retreat, I think either up here in Diyarbakir or Chisre, or Sisre, and able to reinforce that very easily. Unless the player had selected that beforehand, uh, it would have just probably picked the capital, which is 
What, in, is it in Tehran? It's not. Where is Persia's capital? Maybe Shiraz? Not Khuzestan? It is in Dashtistan, who is, uh, which has become a very good province as the capital of the Persian Empire. 30 development, though uh, not that great in base tax. But that's alright. We'll take a glance at the great powers. We can see, well, Wu was, uh, or Emperor Wu, was the 8th great power, that now usurped by Shogun Ashikaga, who I'm guessing is ready to put down its rebellious and one of the last remaining daimyos in Wesugi. Akamatsu actually still around, one of the three last remaining tags in Japan. Not bad, f not bad for a revolter tag, the only revolter tag that I released uh, in Japan at the beginning. Obviously they started off the game with no army, had to fend for themselves, and did quite well for it. Other than that, we do have another great power arising in Venice. Uh, Venice... <sighs> Looks like Venice has actually usurped Nitra for great powerdom, considering they've gone over and wiped out Croatia. <laughs> Croatia still holding on to Varazdin and Bosna, but uh, a lot of their provinces, including their usual capital in Zagreb, taken by the Venetians. Lika, also a very nice and rich province, good for Venice to hold on to. Rather surprised that Austria hasn't decided to uh, get Venice out of the Italian region. Brescia, a 20 development province. Cremona, also a 20 development province. That's 40 easy development there. Well, perhaps not easy. Venice is quite strong does have a trade league with the Knights, Sicily, Utrecht, and Provence, and uh, also allied with Gascony, Siena. Gascony also a great power earlier, but no longer the case, so uh, that's someone else who Venice has knocked off. Looks like Wallachia and Serbia have managed to get military access through Kandar, so they've made it over to Hudavendigar, going to occupy that, and then siege down Sauruhan itself. I was really rooting for the white hand there, as I'm sure anybody who's watched the earlier episodes can attest, but uh, their alliances have failed them, most notably the one with the Mamluks, and uh, it's just not going to happen. Down here, I think Morocco actually did win that war against Tunis, and Austria for that matter. They did, I'm pretty sure, I know they took Kodna, that being the war goal, uh, I think they also took Biskra and perhaps Mitidja as well, that one being the most notable, it being a 13 development coastal province. So Tunis now with this little enclave here in Morocco. I'm guessing Morocco will want to consolidate that as soon as they can. Judging from the brokenness of Ethiopia's stacks, they are not at war currently, but they did manage to take Mocha and Jeddah from Hejaz, so as expected, they did expand into the Arabian Peninsula, and uh, Jeddah, a center of trade, I believe, in the Alexandria node. Indeed. So, uh, Ethiopia perhaps looking to pick up some of its blessings in the future. Right now, they likely only have Aksum and Kasser Ibrim giving them Coptic blessings, but, uh, they can get some of the other ones, that'd be good for them. Uh, I'm not sure if Persia actually took anything from Syria in that. I think they took at least Sinjar, and they did uh, give Adana to Karaman, and Persia all the way west to Bozok. Jermion would be a... Uh, maybe not an easy conquest for them, but very doable. Persia, the power in the east that uh, has really just uh, arisen. <laughs> I think I've said that far too many times. Another round of Crimean separatists for everybody to deal with over here. This time spawned by Theodoro. Odiev did take those guys in uh, the, the Crimeans over in Ingil and Zaporozhia, and now going after Moldavia. Guessing Odiev started this. Yep, that'd be the Odoyevan conquest of Bratislav. And probably looking to get Yadisan too. 
Though that, uh, engagement, it was looking pretty bad for him. Moldavia, actually, I, I was thinking that Moldavia might have a tech advantage over Odiev from how that battle started, but instead the opposite true. Odiev on tech 12, a rather important tech, to Moldavia's tech 11, uh, I do believe tech 12 gives tactics, so... Regardless, the battle done, Odiev and Theodoro winning that. Theodoro probably hoping that Odiev will uh, send its troops over and maybe help him with the Separatists, though uh, those have decided to focus their efforts on Kasim's land for now. I think I've mentioned him, but uh, Trebizond did end up with the provinces of Kaffa and Mantrega, or Matrika, depending on which uh, fellow controls it. And because of their historical friendship with Theodoro, uh, they haven't been taken by the arising purple... can't really call him a blob, but, uh, well, they haven't been taken by Theodoro, and Circassia not really big enough to uh, do anything about them. Gendar could possibly get up there and make something happen, but uh, yeah, well, we'll just have to see. Or in Mauritia is still around, actually a vassal of Odiev. Uh, considering Odiev has no connection to them, it's no wonder that their liberty desire is 100%. Can't help but wonder if Persia might have something to say about that. Abkhazia would uh, give them all of the southern Caucasus and give them an inroad to the steppes. Kiva has done quite well for himself. Uh, allied with Afghanistan and guaranteed by Persia, They've managed to consolidate a lot of this land in the southern Aral and eastern or, uh, Transcaspia region. Including right now a war against Uzbek. Is Afghanistan involved in this one? Uh, no, Afghanistan is looking to clean up the last province of Baluchistan. That being Chabahar. <laughs> Only three development, but uh, Afghanistan wants it nonetheless. Ludak still alive in here. Tributary state of Tibet. I can't remember if Tibet is a formable or if they've just up and eaten Utsong. Regardless, uh, Tibet can end up with a pretty strong army. I do believe their national ideas are pretty good for that. Right now, they've only taken religious, but uh, you do have Bon influence there with uh, land leader shock plus one. Definitely a good idea. Um, really, there are a few better. We've seen Emperor Wu's mandate plummeting. Only 25 right now, so they'll take an extra 25% fire and shock damage. Though they have secured five tributaries, including I do see Ming here. So perhaps they weren't actually destroyed? I didn't... I hadn't thought that I'd seen any Ming around, but uh, there they are. They are alive in Xi'an, of all places. Xi'an, one of the former Chinese capitals, perhaps of one of the ancient dynasties, uh, 17 development, so a good province, but it's all Ming has. Former Emperor Yan is stabilized a bit since his loss of the mandate, uh, though I do believe he was made to spit out Korchin, and uh, has not been able to put down Qi. Qi has been a very stubborn tag. Starts over here in this peninsular area got really wrecked at first by Ming, and then later Yan, and perhaps Wu at some point as well. But they've been able to hold on, whether in this current province or in Laizhou. I think I've seen them in Wudong and Jinan before. Props to them for hanging on. The printing press will have spawned by this point. Let's see where that happened. That would be up here in northern Germany. That would be in Berlin. Pretty good province for that to spawn, I'd think. Brandenburg definitely benefiting, and uh, likely Poland as well. Poland not allied with Brandenburg. Are they rivals? Well, Brandenburg has uh, rivaled Poland, so that'll definitely... Not outright stop, but limit the spread of the printing press to... Poland, at least uh, from Brandenburg. I seem to recall Bohemia being a bit smaller than this, but they've come back to some extent. They don't have all of their lands. 
pretty sure they do have things like... Mm. I thought they had Saxony at the beginning. No, that that's why it's called Saxony. Ay, ay, ay. Regardless, I'm sure you all heard the timer, so that is the end for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.